From the beginning, Frank Lloyd Wright was destined for greatness. At a young age, his mother noticed his ability to construct things with household items. She encouraged his talents by giving him Froebel blocks so that he could create buildings and let his imagination run wild. Young Frank grew up in Wisconsin, spending every summer on his uncle's farm. This is when he first began to dream of becoming an architect. His time there would later influence the role of nature in his designs. Mr. Wright never finished high school, but attended the University of Wisconsin, studying civil engineering. He left after two semesters and at age 21 began working for famous architect Louis Sullivan. In 1889, Mr. Wright and his newlywed Catherine moved to Oak Park, Illinois, where he had bought her a house as a wedding present. In 1893, Wright and Sullivan ended their business relationship as a result of Wright designing outside the Sullivan studio. He added a studio to his home in Oak Park and began, in earnest, to break the box. The fundamentals of Western architecture were created over 2,000 years ago by the Greeks and Romans. The neoclassic style has been used for centuries as a way of identifying important buildings and structures. In fact, in 1893, the same year Wright leaves Sullivan's studio, what is now the Museum of Science and Industry is constructed to resemble a Roman temple for the Columbian Exposition of the World's Fair, which celebrated the United States' new role as a world power. Homes at this time were being built in the Romanesque, Italianate, and Victorian styles. All of these referenced European design and were heavy in ornamentation and vertical in mass. Both the exteriors and interiors were box-like. Every room was formal and separate, with no flow based in use or design. The Prairie School of Architecture was unique and groundbreaking in its emphasis on the organic and not the past. As Mr. Wright mastered the exterior elements of the movement, including the use of natural materials and the emphasis on horizontal lines, he developed the idea of truth in architecture. The enclosed space within is the reality of the building. Frank Lloyd Wright, 1905. He began to design from the inside out, taking into consideration the use of the room and the flow within the house, but always remembered the location on which the project was being constructed. He wants the, the house to grace its site and not disgrace it. Frank Lloyd Wright believed that a building should not overpower its site. Instead, it should blend in with the nature that surrounds it. At Falling Water, he sighted the project over the waterfall, allowing the Kaufmans to live within the scenery instead of simply looking at it. Mr. Wright used colors and organic materials to reflect the land around his projects. He broke down the barriers between inside and outside space. For the first time, windows and doors were used as removable walls. In his home and studio, he incorporated a living tree into his design rather than cut it down. Instead of the closed-off rooms found in Victorian homes, Mr. Wright broke the box by enlarging openings, eliminating doors, and taking down the walls between rooms. This created a sense of openness and allowed occupants and visitors to see through the house from one room to the next. His bay and bow windows literally pushed into nature. He designed comfortable furniture and made the fireplace a prominent design element because he believed this. Was the heart of the whole and of the building itself. Frank Lloyd Wright, Architect, Architecture and the Client, 1896. Instead of this being a hole in a wall, it was a focal point and often ran the length of an entire wall. The resulting space was informal and family friendly. The house of moderate cost is not only America's major architectural problem, but the problem most difficult for her major architects. Frank Lloyd Wright. In 1936, Catherine and Herbert Jacobs challenged Wright to construct a decent house for $5,000. His solution, known as the Usonian model, allowed him to achieve his goal of designing architecture for democracy. These one-story houses, built in the shape of an L, were constructed with their back to the street and the front facing the private garden at the rear of the property. They had no attics or basements and very little ornamentation. Although Frank Lloyd Wright will be forever remembered for the brilliant designs of his larger homes and commercial spaces, his greatest impact has resulted from this affordable and original American style.
Because he didn't have any formal training, engineers hated Mr. Wright. They would stop construction in the middle of his projects, telling him that his ideas would not work. But Mr. Wright was a very smart man. He would prove to the engineers that his designs were buildable by demonstrating the idea to them on a much smaller scale. He had a love-hate relationship with the public, and even some of his clients. Although Edward and Mary Hills lived in one of his Oak Park homes, their son John wrote in a letter, My parents' idea on the Wright houses was that some of them were pleasing, many of them were queer, and all of them were inconvenient and needed alteration. Ultimately, many of his peers adopted his style, and a large body of his work is recognized as the Prairie School. Today, the American Institute of Architecture recognizes Frank Lloyd Wright as one of the most important architects of the 20th century, and many of his homes have been designated historical landmarks. Architects today constantly look to what Wright achieved. David Hanks, Wright Scholar and Art Historian. Wright became the father of modern architecture just by breaking the box. Stanley Tigerman, Chicago Architect. Breaking down the space of interior rooms by removing walls and doors created a more family-focused environment. This idea is the foundation of our modern great rooms. Fireplaces continue to dominate modern design as focal points, bringing a sense of friendliness and warmth where family and friends can gather. Frank Lloyd Wright believed that buildings should relate to the space around them. At Falling Water, he did this by placing the house over the water and using elements like the covered walkway between the main house and the guest house as a stylized reflection of the waterfall. In 2010, Jeannie Gang used this same approach in designing the award-winning Aqua. The building, located in Chicago, overlooks Lake Michigan. The exterior of the building seems to ripple like the surface of the lake, but these balconies are not ornamental. They were designed to block the sun's rays and slice through the breezes off the lake. Mr. Wright believed less is more and simple is modern. His quest to design affordable housing was directly responsible for the building frenzy of the 1950s rancher. The walls of windows which bring nature into the house inspired Mies van der Rohe to design buildings of glass. These designs eventually became known as the international style. Mies harkened back to Wright, but Wright harkened back to no one. function. That has been misunderstood. Form and function should be one, joined in a spiritual union. Frank Lloyd Wright